guys and girls today we're going to be talking about a very interesting and quite a common species actually it's probably in terms of flatfish if we take out the the diamond smashes you're probably looking at the most common flatfish caught at least on our Kezerin coast um, so we're obviously talking about the brown skate now the brown skate scientific name is Himantura gerardi now obviously named after gerardi uh, we'll get into the rest of it later um, other common names for them sharp nose brown um, some when they when they're smaller size the guys call them soup plates but brown skate is a general it's actually we were lucky with this one of the the species that's name is or common name at least is used universally across now in terms of the actual distribution uh, scientifically the distribution across the world is not very well understood it's not very well defined so you get these sort of vague reports uh, but in South Africa at least you're looking Eastern Cape up into Mozambique with the real sort of prominence being from uh, central KZN all the way up to to the uh, southern Mozambique is really where you're going to be finding them. Um, in terms of how they look, now as the name prescribes it's a very very simple brown skate um, and the other common name sharp nose brown sort of alludes to that uh, the, another feature. You've got a normal stingray shape so flat sort of flattened uh, also ventrally flattened animal uh, very very long tail the right at the end has got black and white barring on the tail itself and this is really prominent in the juveniles not so much in the adults so sometimes when you're walking in estuaries and things like that you'll see this little little black and white line you wonder what's that you pick it up and then it shoots off into the distance um, very long tail spikes on the top so they are dangerous be careful of those um, if you are going to handle them they're really two ways of going about it the one is if you're on sand you can gently step on the tail just to keep it in place um, but obviously far away from the bob uh, otherwise if you get a cloth you can just wrap it around the actual tail around where the bob is itself and that just keeps the bob nice and flat and it can't actually get into you or, or stab you at all um, browns are fairly placid so you don't really have to worry it's not a blue skate about it actually actively trying to hurt you um, so yeah, that's, it's not really too much of a concern, but just be careful when you are out there. The uh, rest of the brown is a sort of a muddy, muddy brown color overall. Um, and the front of his head, instead of being rounded, it's more like a, a honeycomb, where he actually comes to a bit of a point um, with his nose. Now, the, where you're going to find them, you're looking at sandy beaches, estuaries, and not really going to be far up the estuaries but sort of in the muddy bank areas um, where they really want to be feeding for crustaceans and things like that so all your crabs your shrimp that kind of thing um, that's because its mouth is underneath that's how it feeds obviously on the bottom now in terms of baits and things for that or uh, at least let's, let's do maximum size first the biggest known Brown skate of a quarter was about 34 kilos, and that was a disc width of 123 uh, centimeters, which is a hell of a brown. I mean, that's a giant. Now, there is sometimes confusion. There is a round nose brown that's not well defined, and there's a sharp nose brown. So, there could be confusion as between the two species. Now, your average size is going to be more sort of around that 8 kilo mark up to about 15 kilos, with a very good specimen being over 20. If you get a brown over 20, that's a really good fish. Um, now in terms of what they're going to be feeding, what to target them with, uh, crustaceans are really their, their bread and butter, that's what they eat, that's what they target, um, that's what they're designed to go after. So prawn baits are very good for the juveniles, you often pick them up when fishing for other edible or fishing for edible fish you'll pick up a brown skate. So you'll throw a nicely presented prawn bait for pompano or something like that and the brown will pick you up and rev you like no tomorrow. Um, and then little choco baits are also very very good for them. But when it comes to the brown's most favorite bait, you've got two. Your red eye head or red eye cutlet bait that is responsible for more big browns than any other bait. And for most number of browns, a base squid has to be number one. If you're looking for a brown skate, put a base squid on. If, he, if he's not there, or if he's there, he'll eat it, whether you land on the bank or near him or anything. Um, and then in terms of where to actually look for them like we mentioned estuaries you're really looking in the prawn banks the little drop-offs changes in, in depth and things like that 
and then uh, in the surf zone you want to look for your sandbank edges so much similar like um, like we did the, the honeycomb and things like that you're going to look in the same sort of areas where you got rips going out uh, on the edges of sandbanks any sort of anything like that now it's a very important recreational species uh, very popular amongst the competition guys because they do make up quite a large weight very quickly and they are easy to catch once you've located them so it's another one of those summer fish northeasterly wind is what you want a little bit of color in the water is always good um, you don't need steel wire for them they don't have teeth uh, it's safe to handle them by the mouth and in terms of the tackle itself uh, watch the video on the three to five ounce uh, saltist grinder rod that is literally the perfect stick for them it's designed for them so yeah guys the brown skate very nice fish uh, very easy one to catch nice one to get started into your inedible side of things